Hi, it's Chris from Implied Music. Welcome back. Uh, this semester, my students and I have been exploring ways to take simple triads, easy chord progressions, and animate them to make them cinematic. Let's take a look at some simple triad tricks. <laughs> So here's our chord progression. It's uh, simple triads. C, E, E major, there's a non-diatonic chord tone there. A minor, which is of course the sixth tone in the relative minor. And then slip it down, we'll keep the same note in the middle, the C, slip the triad down to A flat major. one minor chord in the bunch, and not a bad chord progression. But the way it's voiced now, the way it's appearing on the screen, what we call instrumental form, is, um, is not really to our liking. Well, there's a couple of simple things that we can do to make this more interesting. Let's take a look at uh, the first thing. So I did something here with, with these group of notes, which is um, quite a solid trick, and it's just to grab the middle note from the group and pull it down an octave. We get what we call a drop two open voicing. The voicing itself is wider than an octave. immediately more sonorous, fills out the string space better, we get more of a bottom end, but it still has some of the same problems of parallelisms, parallel fifths, everything moving in the same direction, and kind of questionable voice leading. Well, voice leading is something we've talked about in other videos, but take a look at this, the first version again. So here I, I did a couple of things. I, I've moved notes around. This C used to be on the bottom. Putting it on top means that it moves very smoothly to the E major triad. I didn't change the E major triad at all. It's just straightforward. And now I'm also, the big benefit for me is that I've got a nice, easy melody line on top, and I've avoided the parallel fifths. The next chord, A minor, I inverted again. I took... Uh, I took the bottom two notes, or maybe I took, I, I forget what I did. I took the top note and moved it down. And again, no parallel fifths, yay. And then as I move uh, from A minor to A flat major, parallel fourths, oh, I'll live with that. It's a much smoother sound. That's a professional sound. It's, um, however, a little closed. That is to say, all the voicings are within an octave. So let's use our drop two trick on this arrangement. I took the middle voice and pulled it down an octave. Now we're talking. That sounds terrific. And that's just using a very simple um, logic native string ensemble. If I wanted to get serious, I'd grab the bottom notes, give them to cellos, violas, violins, one. I could pan them that way. I could even create different effects. Well, it, it's working for me, but it's not very animated. So we're going to borrow uh, a hack from our uh, Floyd Kramer video and look for the fifths in each of the chords and give a little uh, alternate uh, motion to it. Here the fifth is G. I went up to A, back to G, up to A. I went up a step, down a step. And I've done that with all the fifths. And suddenly things get much more interesting.
that's a lot of fun. If I wanted to take things a little bit further, I could select all of these notes that have a little motion and go over here to the articulation set. I've chosen, by the way, here the articulation set string ensemble, which means that this will pop up over on the sidebar. And I'll say, I want those notes spiccato. Much more animated, same chord progression. The instrumental form is beginning to get really interesting. Well, one thing I'm always fascinated by is dissonance and prepared dissonance. And for, for, the, for a variation here, what I've done is I've let notes from the previous chord hang over a beat into the next chord. So here, from the C chord, the C hangs over and then moves down to B. Good voice leading means almost everything's going to be moving in half steps. Here we go. Because I might be looping this chord progression, this E flat here is going to show up over here going up to an E. Well, this is lovely and even slower. It might. It's cinematic sound, isn't it? I think to make it even more cinematic, let's add roots. I've added notes, just uh, taking my, my well-prepared, voice-led, drop-two versions of this chord progression, and I just put the root in. So double basses, roots down here. That's thick. Well, that's a lot of fun. It doesn't have a lot of uh, pop to it. So let's take the tempo up a little bit. I was at 100. Let's take it up to 120 or so. Just a nice solid pop music uh, speed. And I've split each of the notes from my voice leading, you can see it, into eighth notes. And I've created a walking bass descending from the roots. Well, not always descending. Here, descending from the C, I've just gone down the, the scale until I run out of quarter notes and I hop to the E. Here I used a classic trick. Whole step, half step, half step to get to the A. When you have root motion up a fourth, it's a great way to go. Uh, here, since I'm heading to an A flat, I went down and then back up again. And from A flat, A flat, B flat, C, D, up a Lydian scale. This would loop nicely. Articulation sets are changed. You can hear I chose pizzicato for the eighth notes, and I'm still in the sustain sound for the basses. That's fun. Well, let's listen to it again. Well, we don't need to listen to it again. Here's the same type of thing, and I've, I, I, I observed, looking at this first one here, come back, I observed that this central line here was fairly static. You can see these notes just remain the same all the way through until you get to over here. So I said, well, what if I, what if I put a little trill, a little half step in here, it becomes a whole step trill on there. All right, we, we're back to, I think, just uh, spiccato strings here. <laughs> Simple triads don't have to be um, boring, don't have to be unanimated. There are a couple or several, there are many. <laughs> let's, just, let's just say there's an infinite number. It's probably not infinite. There are lots of ways to take your triad progressions and uh, turn them into something vital. When you're trying to make cinematic music, you've got to think to yourself, what makes this animated? What else can I do? I didn't take an awful lot of time to take this simple chord progression, this loop, and, and add um, color and shape to it by changing the instrumental form of harmony, not just sustained tones, chopped up, 
little motions on each note. It's a great way to add vitality to your arrangements. This would sound terrific with a beat behind a vocalist. It may even suggest melodies to you. Well, I hope this was useful. Like and subscribe. I'll see you next time. Thanks. Thank you.